Hi, I'm Rob. Welcome to Math Antics. In this lesson, we're going to learn about another important geometry quantity called volume. Specifically, we're going to learn what volume is, and what kind of units we use to measure volume, and how we can calculate the volumes of a few simple geometric shapes. The first thing you need to know is that volume is a quantity that all three-dimensional objects have. But to understand what it means, it will help if we back up just a little and start out with a one-dimensional object, like this line segment. To measure a one-dimensional object, we need a one-dimensional quantity, which we usually call length. The length of this line happens to be exactly one centimeter, which is a common unit for measuring length. And in the Math Antics video about area, we saw that if we move or extend this one-dimensional line in a direction perpendicular to it by a distance of one centimeter, it forms a two-dimensional object called a square. Two-dimensional objects are measured by the two-dimensional quantity that we call area. Because the original line was one centimeter long, and we extended it a distance of one centimeter, the amount of area that this square occupies is one square centimeter, which is a common unit for measuring area. Okay, now, imagine that we take that two-dimensional square and move, or extend it, in a direction perpendicular to its surface by a distance of one centimeter. It forms a three-dimensional object that's called a cube. And to measure a three-dimensional object like this, we use a three-dimensional quantity called volume. Volume tells us how much three-dimensional space, or 3D space, an object occupies. All right, but how much volume does this cube have? Well, since it was made by extending one square centimeter, a distance of one centimeter, in the third dimension, we say that its volume is exactly one cubic centimeter, which is a common unit for measuring volume. So square units are used to measure area, and cubic units are used to measure volume. Since square units are made by multiplying two one-dimensional units together, like centimeter times centimeter, we can abbreviate them using the exponent notation, centimeters to the second power, or centimeters squared. And since cubic units are made by multiplying three one-dimensional units together, like centimeter times centimeter times centimeter, we can abbreviate them using exponent notation, centimeters to the third power, or centimeters cubed. And just like there were different sizes of square units, like square inches, square meters, or square miles, there's also different sized cubic units, like cubic inches, cubic meters, or cubic miles. See how area and square units are related to volume and cubic units? And there's another similarity too. Do you remember how you can use square units to measure the area of any 2D shape, not just squares? Well, you can use cubic units to measure the volume of any 3D shape, not just cubes. To see how that works, take a look at this 2D circle and this 3D object called a sphere which is like a ball. Just like you can use a bunch of small squares to approximate the area of the circle, you can use a bunch of small cubes to approximate the volume of the sphere. And here's the really cool part. The smaller the squares you use, the closer their combined area will match the area of the circle. And the smaller the cubes you use, the closer their combined volume will match the volume of the sphere. Okay, so volume is a 3D quantity for measuring 3D objects. But since we've also talked a lot about area in this video, I want to point out that 3D objects also have a type of area that you don't want to confuse with volume. You might remember from our previous videos that 2D shapes have both a 2D quantity called area and a 1D quantity called perimeter. Well, in a similar way, 3D objects have both a 3D quantity called volume and a 2D quantity called surface area. Surface area is a lot like it sounds. It's the area of the object's outer surface or shell. Perimeter and surface area are both outer boundaries of geometric shapes. Perimeter is the one-dimensional outer boundary of a two-dimensional shape, and surface area is the two-dimensional outer boundary of a three-dimensional shape. And to help you see the difference between surface area and volume, imagine that you have a perfectly thin box filled with ice. If you unfold the box, you can see the 2D area that surrounds the volume, while the volume itself is the amount of 3D space occupied by the ice inside the box. All right, so now that you understand what volume is, and you won't confuse it with surface area, we're going to spend the rest of the video learning how to calculate the volumes of some basic geometric shapes. But before we do that, I want to quickly mention something important about terminology, or the words we use to describe things in math. Most of the time, people agree on what to call things in math, but not always. And that's especially true when it comes to the words that we use to describe the dimensions of geometric objects. Take the words length, width, and height, for example. If I have a rectangle, I can name its two dimensions length and width, like we did in the area video. 
but I could also name them width and height if I wanted to. The actual names of the dimensions really aren't important, so different teachers might use different names. The important thing is to be flexible and realize that the math concepts are the same, even if different words are used to explain them. For example, the area of a rectangle is always found by multiplying its two side dimensions together, no matter what they're called. Okay, back to calculating volumes. A lot of 3D shapes can be formed by taking a 2D shape and then extending it along the third dimension. For example, if you start with a rectangle and then extend it along the third dimension, you get a 3D shape called a rectangular prism. If you start with a triangle and then extend it along the third dimension, you get a 3D shape called a triangular prism. And if you start with a circle and extend it along the third dimension, you get a 3D shape called a cylinder. From the others, you might have thought that it should be called a circular prism. But technically, prisms are shapes that are formed by extending a polygon. And since a circle is not a polygon, the resulting shape is not called a prism. Okay, so the good news 